Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and everything between. This is Super Fancom. Welcome, everyone, to our second video game retrospective where we go year by year and talk about what was going on in pop culture and the world of gaming. All the releases, hardware, news, and this time we are deep diving into 1992 and 1993. Um, also, just like last time, this show's thumbnail was created by Just a Zag. I'm your gamer host, Retro Rick, and joining me is boycotting Breed Larson. It's Morphin Time for Deej the Illustrator. What's up, guys? Uh, Duck Fly Together, he's boycotting the Sci Fi Channel, Fanboy GIF. It's me! Uh, he's too legit to quit, uh, Sammy Soundwave. <laughs> Let's get Mortal Kombat! Soon. Uh, and our very special guest, Cecil T. Robot. Cecil Trachtenberg. Hey, thanks for having me. Although I'm not boycotting anything currently. Yet. Yeah. How yeah. are you not? It's 2019. You have to boycott everything and anything. Yeah, with That's the program, just the rules I guess. Of 2019. <laughs> okay. I'm uh, boycotting have... boycotts. Fair ah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. You're clever. You can't do that. I'm boycotting your boycott. Oh, crap. All right. Uh, <sighs> Boycottception. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cecil, uh, tell us what you do, who you are and what you do. Uh, I, a lot of people say that I am an internet reviewer, although I don't really classify myself as that. Uh, I, if anything, I'm more an internet, uh, video documentarian. I talk a lot about, uh, obscure movies and, uh, talk a lot about, like, semi-popular movies i mean every now and then i'll break into something like the mask or the mummy and kind of remind people you know hey remember these giant blockbusters that everybody forgot about uh you should go watch them because they're really awesome yes. and uh i have a mm, small to medium-sized youtube channel that uh you know i do for a living so yep. uh by the way we are recording this episode in a very special week uh hey cecil uh happy belated rex manning day Ah, uh, yes, I did do a movie, or did do a movie, I did do a <laughs> review on Empire Records and about how uh, the studio really botched that one up, and uh, we still have yet to see the original version of the film, um, but it has developed a very healthy uh, fan base over the years, and uh, part of that being for a uh, little Rex Manning day. Nice. Alright, uh, what games... Like what currently are everyone is everyone playing? What kind games are you streaming? You're playing for fun? What what have you? I've been playing Yokai Watch Three. Like I'm a big fan of the Yokai Watch series, even though sadly, as I've been told, it's not exactly that popular in America. Which kind of it makes me sad because like many people keep saying it's a Pokemon ripoff, which to some degree I can kind of see that, but it's not really a Pokemon ripoff. You can't just capture these monsters. You have to befriend them and all that. That's with ghosts. And I actually really hope they bring Yokai Watch 4 to the States. Hmm. Sam? Um, yeah, I'm playing a mixture of things. Um, I play Final Fantasy 14. I have some fun with that. Um, I actually have a friend who got me into playing Fate Go on my phone. Nice. And, um, you know, just for laughs and everything, I occasionally go back to some of my old Pokemon games and start those up. Nice. Gif, what about you? Uh, I finally picked up Octopath Traveler for my Switch. I've been playing that pretty religiously. It's um, it's that nice throwback, nostalgic feel of a, a classic RPG, JRPG, so I do appreciate that. Um, I did dabble at Anthem to see what the fuss was about after the, um, the whole uh, demo like beta weekend that they did yeah. um, to kind of see how that played out. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an Iron Man simulator. There's no doubt about it. It's it's kind of if an Iron Man simulator got mixed with um, like Destiny 2. Um, so I did dabble at that, and I've kind of let that one go. Now I'm trying my hand at the Division 2 um, to again see kind of how that would play out maybe for a, for a series in some way, shape, or form. Um, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, I did uh, try my hand at the... Because I'm, I'm a sucker for classic Kirby. Um, nice. I did try uh, Kirby Star Allies to see if that would be something fun that we could all play. Um, because I know that it, you can, like, four-player it. Yeah, so I did kind of dabble at that. 
Um, and I'm mostly waiting for um, for the Joker to finally appear uh, on um, Super Smash Ultimate, <coughs> if he ever does. Oh, Persona. Um, Cecil, what about you? Play anything? Uh, yeah, right now, um, well, I'm streaming uh, Fist of the North Star, the Xbox 360 one. Um, oh, wow. Uh, Ken, Ken's... Uh... Yeah, Ken's Rage. Yeah, I'm, I, I have that. I have that. I, it was... Uh... I, I, I'm not f- a fan of the mechanics of that game. My only gripe is uh, where I'm stuck at right now. Like, I'm playing it, and uh, it's going along. You know, it's it's basically Dynasty Warriors mixed with yeah. uh, the Fist of the North Star license, which I like, and it's fun, but um, the, the bosses always have three phases, and the third phase, they have a mechanic where uh, they just get their health back. And if you can't figure out what you need to do to, like, kind of, you know, hit them for more damage than they can heal, then they just keep healing indefinitely, and you eventually lose. And so right now I'm stuck on the fifth boss, and I just, I can't, like, I can blow through his first two things, no problem. And then his third phase, he's so cheap, and uh, I, like, he'll, he gets, he, like, can one-shot you, practically, if you, if you don't dodge out of the way of his one, like, green blast. It's really annoying. But, uh, aside from that, I enjoyed it. Um, I'm also, uh, what else am I playing? Uh, I was playing a little, uh, Diablo 3 on, uh, the, the Xbox One. Um, I was playing, uh, Sekiro, and had to give that a break, because I was trying to stream it. And that's the kind of game where I really, really need to pay attention. Yeah, you because do. I'm getting distracted by chat, and next thing I know, like I'm, I'm getting you know speared, and I'm like, oh god, you know. So yeah, that's a game where uh, I, it's a game that I can eventually beat, but it's just a matter of I, I can't stream it. Like I really just need to pay attention to that. Like something, like I was able to uh, I played through Blood Blo- Blo- Blood Bloodborne. I played through uh, <laughs> Bloodborne on stream. I beat that tw- uh, twice uh, with the, all the um, uh, the DLC. I did The Surge. I did uh, Dark Souls. I did all those kind of Souls-like games. But the thing with Sekiro is it's Dark Souls meets, and it's not just, this is Dark Souls. No, it really legitimately is. Yeah. Dark Souls meets um, Tenchu. And so you need to kind of be on your toes at all times to be stealthy, to be able to fight. And I just don't have the brain power <laughs> to really do that while streaming. So, uh, yeah, that. And um, uh, I was playing a little uh, Enter the Gungeon on uh, my that Switch. I just amazing. got that on sale. It is a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I like that because I, I didn't, I wasn't crazy about um, the the nuclear, what's uh, what's the other one that's like that? Um, the Nuclear Throne, yeah. the Nuclear Throne. That one I couldn't really get into, but I'm really getting into Enter the Gungeon. Nice. So, that's fun. Nice. So, I have a, a question to ask about that Fist of the North Star game. Okay. So, the third stage, you're having trouble. Did you tell him that he was already dead? Yes. I actually, I t- a few times, because actually when you do, uh, there's like your super move, and mm-hmm. he does, he's like, you're already dead, and then he doesn't die, and I'm like, and I have to do it like three or four times, <laughs> and I'm like, no, he's he's dead, you know, like, because there are Nani? some of the, if you can do it to the mini bosses, they do the cool, he walks away, and they explode, but awesome. if you do it to one of the main bosses, they just kind of take a lot of damage, even though he says you're already dead. So you th- you think they would have programmed that in that they wouldn't say it until the end? Right. But yeah, eh, what are you gonna do? It's still you know it's cool. But yeah, right. actually that was the the first night I played it. That was the uh, the stream's name was you're already dead. Okay. So. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Okay, let's hop into 1992 with uh, the debut of Crips- Crystal Pepsi and the end of Coke Two. <gasps> Um, Such but, dark uh, times, indeed. Yep. It was it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Uh, the Mighty Max toy line came out. Ooh. Oh my god! Does anyone else? Does anyone remember watching the cartoon show? Yes. I have vague memories. Um, since I was honestly born around this timeline, um, I have vague memories growing up, 
like I, maybe when I was three or something, of just seeing these shows like during their last few year, like last year of reruns or something. Mm-hmm. So I have vague memories of all of these, but nothing concrete. Right. Um, we also had the the baked apple pie from McDonald's came out debuting. Ooh. Um, the Mall of America opened in August. Fantastic. Uh, AT and T. Released the video telephone for $1,499. <laughs> and that's just one phone, right? Yep. Well, you considering the fact... another that... person to own the phone. <laughs> well, considering the fact that what phones will... You know, like... What is it? Like, the X cost, like, you know, $999 or something when they were first discussing it? That's... Yeah. We haven't really gone that far. Yep. Yeesh. Um... <laughs> Macromedia was introduced, which is noted for Flash, Dreamweaver, and uh, Macromedia Director. Ooh. Um, the book series Goosebumps debuted. Wow. Really? Oh, that's Just to eventually be a, crapped into a uh, terrible movie with Jack Black. Black yes. Okay, no, the first, no I, the first one I thought was good, mainly because it, it had that same kind of cheesy campiness of the TV show, which I'm hoping they that was they went for. I didn't bother see the sequel, though, because I never trust sequels, really. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah but, I mean, yeah. Are, the problem is, Are You Afraid of the Dark was better than Goosebumps oh, well, 9 I, out of 10 times. Well, to be fair, Goosebumps, I think it was really about the scares. It was more about, like, the just the story and how these characters were supposed to, like, get out of these situations. With, with Are You Afraid of the Dark, they actually tried to make you crap your pants, because, like, the the <laughs> worst ones I can think of was like uh what any of the stories involving the clown? Yes. Ugh. Okay. The silver eye? Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know. All right. Let's... Tales from the Dark Side and Monsters was better than all. Tales that. from the Dark Side. <laughs> yes. Good one. Yes. Uh, let's hop into comics. Um <laughs> in February 10th, 1992, we get the second half of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure of Stardust Crusaders where the oh. the group finally arrives in Egypt to confront Dio. Um in 1992, <laughs> We are introduced to Image Comics, Wild Storm, and Top Cow Productions. Wow, that Rob was that was yes, but that like was revolutionary times for comics. I mean, oh, yeah. that was when the industry shifted to the creators actually getting like known for their creations like before it was like the studio you know oh well Mm -hmm. you know who knows who you create at the time you know who knows who created spider-man it's but everybody knows marvel and and this it was like well no todd mcfarlane created spawn you had uh you know liefeld did uh, brigade and supreme and you had um young blood young blood yes you had so many people i want to highly recommend a documentary i think it's on youtube Someone look up the doc- if if you ever get the chance look up the documentary about the making of Superman for uh, with the two creators because it is it's one of those like I can't believe fucking DC did this to the creators of Superman it's one of those like how they got screwed over and how they were not making a dime off their own character they created while DC was making millions yeah. oh yeah tell me that yeah. was fixed no hmm? <laughs> no it's it's like I mean they eventually got like a their family got like a settlement but it was a pittance compared to the bazillions of dollars yeah. that uh you know Superman and Batman and all them have made over the years like i had to go i went um in ohio is the home where uh you know the the Don Siegel uh home where Superman was created Ooh. and it was like kind of in like not not disrepair but it wasn't like it, it was like a nothing thing and um uh my uh i know some people who got involved and um they got like the um there's a brick a fence around the house and they got this really nice um like plaque and things set up that you know this you know here was where uh, history was made you know this is the house where superman was created and and all that and and it's just it's so funny that like you know dc like didn't want them to do that and it's like really like you wouldn't be anything today if mm-hmm. this if it wasn't for the you know the guys in this house right. you know and just uh, so but for they, the immigrants you know, who came here to write their story <laughs> right you know it, it's just it's so 
silly that uh, that they they would fight them over something like that. But anyway, yeah. uh, that's a whole uh, other thing. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, but we're getting away to the, the whole thing. Yeah. But it is nice that Image uh, really did Image and uh, Malibu and all that. They really did uh, comics. It's a the '90s comics, I should say, right. was a really big, near and dear thing to me. So I have a lot of history okay. in we, that. We get Young Blood in April, followed by Spawn in May, Savage Dragon in July, Brigade, uh, Shadowhawk, and Wildcats in August. Um, we go to uh, Batman 475, the introduction of R- Renee Montoya. Ooh! Uh, in mm-hmm. April, with Amazing Spider-Man 361, we get the full appearance of Carnage. Nice! Uh, wow! Yeah. I thought Rick. Wow. Rick, I just I just want to say that um, you you disrespected Savage Dragon by just absolutely glossing over that. Yeah. <laughs> What are you going to do? Uh, in- <laughs> Savage Dragon, like, unfortunately, Eric Larson has lost his goddamn mind, but, um... Uh, oh, oh, wholeheartedly. I wholeheartedly agree that that uh, absolutely insane at this point. But, but but 90s Savage Dragon was phenomenal. Like, he's pretty much disavowed the thing that made him famous. But it's like, you know, like, I mean, I know he worked in comics prior but I mean, Savage Dragon was really his big. I mean, it had a a, a TV series and uh, you know a whole lot of stuff to go along with that. And uh, he he just can't stand it now, and it's a shame because if you go back and like I a couple years ago I was rereading uh, like the first few that and Freak Force, and uh, it's like it's so it's very '90s, but it's so blunt. You know, it's really kind of it, it was a neat series and it's such a shame that uh, like i said the creator just is it has disowned his own creation yeah uh july we are introduced to james rhodes as war machine in iron man 282 nice um we uh from dark horse comics we get the first robocop versus terminator comic Ooh. oh they were nice. great they were so goddamn much fun yeah, yeah. I, I sadly remember reading part one. I need, I need to find, I need to get my hand on like the books and such. Oh yeah, they they should be relatively easy to find. They reprinted them a bunch of times, and they're floating out there in the the internets. Um, they're really good. They're they're and the all the Dark Horse, RoboCop, Terminator, Aliens, Predator, all those books are very fun reads, and they oh, expand I- the universe so much it's really cool like, oh, that agree. would be the first you know like concept for like at least alien vs prior like the expansion of that universe wouldn't it the comics uh i think i think originally it started uh, and i'm not entirely positive i'd have to go back and look at the years but i think it originally started at the end of predator 2 where uh danny glover was on the predator ship and he was looking through, and he found the trophy room. And in the trophy room was the skull of one of the xenomorphs from Alien. That's and essentially. I think, oh. I think you're right. No, I think you're right. That's this, it's essentially the same kind of origin where where the whole how uh, Freddy versus Jason versus Ash became a thing with the comic. How in in Jason Goes to Hell, they uh, one of the characters actually finds the Necronomicon. Right. Ah, oh, yeah. That comic was bad uh, towards the end, though. I mean, it was a good comic, but the, it had weird plot holes. It, yeah, it, it was a good try. I yeah. still kind of would have wanted to see it, you know, get made just because I love Bruce Campbell. Oh, yeah, definitely. Sometimes they go a little bit too nutsy, where, like, there was a... Uh, uh, it, there, oh, there was sorry, one, it was like... Th- there was one, it was like... Freddy versus Jason versus Ash versus Michael Myers and like Kiss had a cameo and I'm like <laughs> all right now you guys Wait, are just going what? bonkers <laughs> Kiss had a cameo yeah well they were <laughs> trying to save Santa so I can understand this <laughs> was, was a different time celebrities can still be was. anything <laughs> it, yeah it's just they they come kind of like all right guys knock it off you're going a little too far here. <laughs> Okay. And, I was good up until you put Kiss in this. Now, <laughs> now you lost your mind. And speaking of Kiss, we head on to music. the The top tracks of 1992: "Baby Got Back" by, by Sir Mix a Lot. Word. <laughs> yeah, I like the, big butts. Yep. The first music video. I, I cannot. Uh, 
Yep, the first music video I ever saw on MTV, Jump by Criss Cross. <laughs> Go ahead and jump. Yes. Um, That's horrifying. Under the Bridge uh, by did, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Did you, did you immediately put your clothes on backwards? Was totally. <laughs> that, was, that was not... That was not the best Chili Pepper song. No, they had better. That was probably their. That was arguably their biggest thought, song, though. Like that it, really it pushed them the, into the it mainstream. Got the most, it got the most radio play because I think it it was a little more radio play viable than some of their other yeah. songs. So I kind of see why it it fell more into being such a cultural kind of. Um, icon for the time and the song that they'll played on a lot of stations just just as part of an alt rock kind of playlist but i just don't think it's their best song yep. oh it no it's kind of just not their best song right, but there... it definitely had the most radio appeal oh yeah we also, we also got to be with you by mr big hmm. um right said fred i'm too sexy <laughs> <laughs> um black and white by michael jackson Nice. Achy Breaking uh, Heart by Billy Ray Cyrus. We oh. don't talk about Michael Jackson anymore. You need to know that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, no- can... November Rain by Guns N' Roses. Ooh. Uh, uh, the, the time... that, was the, that was the song that dethroned Thriller yes. for, uh, for, for a brief time, and then Thriller went back. And I think uh, they just were looking for something. Don't talk about Michael <laughs> Jackson in 2019. Jeez. That whole yeah. thing. Just figure out. All right. Um, Jump around by House of Pain. Okay. We are introduced to Smells Like Teen Spirit and Come As You Are by Nirvana. Wow. Okay. Yep. Twenty five years he's been dead. Wow. That was that was a big deal. Like yeah, um, when when that hit, it uh, it seriously. Uh, I don't see everybody kind of. Um, harkens back to Nirvana and, uh, you know, how uh, Nirvana, you know, when Smells Like Teen Spirit came along. And it's like, really, it wasn't just, I mean, Nirvana, yes, was the big one, but it was like Nirvana, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, like all of those alternative rock bands that came along and, you know, they weren't, uh, they were doing, they were doing rock, but they were doing it in in that way. Uh, Pearl Jam was the other one, um, where, it really did change the landscape of music. And I do think it's a shame that like whenever it gets talked about, it's like, Oh my God, Nirvana changed everything. I'm like, well, they were part of what changed right. everything. It was, they weren't solely responsible for changing everything. Now, and this is just me for, because, you know, I'm curious. Did, was it ever discovered the reason why Kurt Cobain killed himself or what, or is it just, you know, speculation still? Uh, Everything that I've seen, it's a combination of um, he was just like, I mean, you've got you've got the three schools of thought on this one. You have the we'll never know. Mm -hmm. Um, You've got the people that were like, you know, he was happy on the outside, depressed on the inside, um, which kind of goes along with the kind of music that he was making. It was like that sort of, uh, you know. Uh, he's he's singing you know all these songs about depression even though he's like you know super rich and all you know so although I think oh god I don't remember the comedian I think it might have been Nick DiPaolo was like uh, he's like yeah my my balls are empty and my bank account is full oh yep. woe is me <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one was a uh, conspiracy theory that. Um, Courtney Love, uh, Courtney Love hired yeah. El Duce from the Mentors to uh, to make it look like um, Kurt killed himself. Right. So, and that's why no one likes her. I think that's giving yeah. Courtney Love way too much credit, though. <laughs> Wasn't that his wife? I don't think Courtney Love at that time in her career could have much of a clear thought enough to say, "I want to have this guy whacked." <laughs> I think it was more. Oh. Where do I get more blow? <laughs> yeah, what? He's dead in the other room? Uh, you know, yeah. Is the blow no fine? Blow. Did, he, did, he, did he use all the blow? That was her only thought when he died. <laughs> right. I doubt it was. All right, we Is also, he dead? All right, we also got Arrested De- uh, Tennessee by Arrested Development. With, like, that group with, like, the 500 members of the band. <laughs> <laughs> um, Too Legit to Quit by MC Hammer. Ooh. Cool. And as uh, Cecil said, Jeremy and Evenflow by Pearl Jam. 
What about yeah. Kiss? You said you mentioned Kiss. Well, I was just saying ki- as oh. a uh, j- Kiss to music, and then we go to music. Okay, sorry. All right. <laughs> yeah. uh, then heading according on to, to Gene Simmons, Kiss every year does yeah. something. So yeah. they were probably okay. a, like fifth annual end of the road tour or something. Yeah, their their reunion or yeah. their uh, you know <laughs> their retirement yeah. one. Yeah. All right. Heading on to TV and movies. Um. Uh, the TBS Afternoon Early Evening World Championship Wrestling is renamed WCW Saturday Night. Um, and next, you'll see, we have The Cosby, <laughs> the Cosby Show, Show. In the which Cos- airs its series finale on NBC. Duh. Are we Wait, allowed series to finale? Yeah, that, oh, wow. <laughs> wow. I, um... I bought the... After the, um... Uh, the whole, you know, at the whole court case with uh, Cosby and whatnot, I bought the box set of the Cosby Show because the price <laughs> plummeted, and I was like, you know, this is going to eventually be like a like a collector's item. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the only way that thing's going to be a collector's item is if you open that up, and in between the DVDs is Bill Cosby semen and and date rape drugs. <laughs> You never, you never know. It's not going to be worth anything. Okay. It's the, the cost of a Bill Cosby DVD set. I, I also, I bought it. I just have like, I have such mixed feelings over the whole thing. I'm not going to delve into it, but it's such a because I mean, I grew up like watching Bill Cosby. He was like the dad. I mean, that's like finding out like Tom Hanks is a serial rapist. Right. It's so like what? I'm not. Def- not defending him i'm not like i'm just saying it's it's just it's really hard to to wrap your brain around yeah this is um, how i feel well it's how i feel about the whole michael jackson thing i grew up listening to his music I, my dad actually got to meet him kind of knew him back in the day before he went white um <laughs> yeah so i can't really <laughs> <laughs> well, he he did. I mean, yeah. he, I'm not lying. Look at his picture. Before he went white, <laughs> it was okay. just how you worded right. it. Um, <laughs> um, just one more thing. Yeah, Sorry, no, Bill it was, Cosby. It was that whole like I used to love his music. Then when the first controversy happened, I was called. I was like, oh, you must support Chama Station because you like Thriller. It's like, how does that make sense? I like his music. And then the whole thing is like, oh, he was a genius. He was a god amongst people after he died. And now this is happening again. I'm just sitting here like, are hey, we? Hey, whoa, whoa. He was Michael Jackson. He wasn't Kanye West, okay? <laughs> I'll be right back. Give me a second. Right. Um, we also had Nickelodeon Time Capsule gets buried in Nickelodeon Studios in Orlando. They moved it when they closed the studio. Yeah, they did. Um, Dug it up, and it's... Yeah. Where the hell it is now? When is that supposed to open Apparently again? It should have been opened already. Yeah, they I thought. Pretty sure they probably trashed it. I, yeah, I mean, I Nick doesn't even have a studio it. now. They just film in various Paramount lots because you know it's all owned by Paramount and Viacom. Yeah. So uh, once uh, once Nickelodeon Studios on Sunset closed after the original Nick Studio closed, I'm, they just now film on various Paramount lots. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that time capsule probably will never be. They will never see the light of day. If it still exists, it's it's probably like just in some back room somewhere that's being forgotten and used as like a coat rack or something. Yeah, along with so the, Amanda uh, Bynes stole it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's kept in a room with along with all the uh, unused um, Avenger DVDs that are shaped like the uh, the cu- the Cosmic Cube. <laughs> oh God! No, uh, what's his name? Dan Dan Snyder has it. No, Dan Zack Snyder. No, the one who does the one who did iCarly, yeah. uh, oh. Drake and Josh. Yeah, all of those. The one, who, the one who literally did iCarly and <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> that guy. Um, that, you're talking the guy. Oh no! Or, or, or was that? Wasn't that the no, guy the, who the producer Dan Warp? The um the one who produced like pretty much every live action Nickelodeon show from all that all the way up to. Victorious? Cat yeah, there was a. Oh, well, that, he, wasn't, that, a wasn't he the that one that, that? Wasn't he the one? He was the one on that was on um, head of the class that ended up. Didn't he like molest like a bunch of the the Nickelodeon stars? Supposedly, oh. he, the rumor was he was kind of being really creepy around around with them. He had a supposed real big foot fetish 
which oh, okay. which made mm-hmm. a lot of scenes from iCarly questionable. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what, and the biggest I don't know if this is true, but the biggest rumor was uh, when what was that? What was Britney Spears show? Uh, Zoe One Hundred and One, I think it was. Oh, that yeah, he the was the father is, of it, the yes. Yeah. The biggest rumor, and the family even believes that her boyfriend is not the father; it's actually Dan. Wow. Yeah. Oof. Wow. That would be an amazing story. Nickelodeon could sell their rights to that. <laughs> yeah, but who would want them? Okay. They'll, they'll air it on uh, SNICK. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, <laughs> just to air that. <laughs> uh, speaking speaking of which, in 1992, we get the debut of SNICK. Ooh, wow. Company. Talk about timing. Best block yeah. television that existed other than Toonami. Yep. Uh, June, they, 10th, they, they, uh, June 10th, the first edition of the MTV Movie Awards was broadcast. Back when it was good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, September 24th, the Sci-Fi Channel, when it was actually called Sci-Fi, launches with the broadcast of Star Wars. Oh, God. we I had to go to my comic book store and, like, sign a petition to get the Sci-Fi Channel. Like, we had to sign a petition to send to our cable company or else they weren't, you know, because they, they, at the time they weren't putting it on the, the, um, on the service. And you had to, like, make it overwhelmingly, you know, yes, we want this channel. You know, now it's like they just give you whatever channel you don't want. It's like, yeah. no, it, back then you had to make a case to have this sci-fi channel. Yeah, but fucking sci-fi is now just the home of wrestling, wrestling. Harry Potter movies. Yeah, and Sharknado. And Sharknado. And, and Sharknado. Sharknado and Harry Potter movie repeats. Wait a minute, isn't Bruce Campbell in one of the Sharknado movies? Uh, is he? I don't know. I, I know I they... I never no, it's the Hawks in the last three of them. Yeah, I know uh, Frankie Muniz is apparently in one of them, but I don't know if Bruce Campbell. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. things that were relevant oh. way back when. Yeah. Okay. Tara uh, Reid. Tara- yes, Tara Reed. Tara Reed. I actually met her, God. And, I got, and I got her to sign the, my copy of uh, Body Shots. Oh, nice. That was a good movie. That was originally uh, was Jello shots, but then they got sued. They had to change <laughs> yeah, the body shots. She looks. She now she looks like a like a melted wax. She like looks, no wax, no I I, wax, she, I of Tara Reid. Yeah. I talked to Uwe Boll about her in uh, Alone in the Dark, and he's like, I've worked with all kinds of people, you know, uh, from all walks of life, uh, talent ranges. He's like, I will work with any of them again, except Tara Reid. <laughs> He's like, she is the only person I've ever worked with who I will never work with again. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, he said that with his really thick accent, but mm-hmm. I just, I thought that that was really funny out of like all the people he's worked with. He was telling us some, some stuff that I can't repeat. Um, but he did. Uh, he really, really does not care for her. <laughs> All right. Um, in Japan, in That's 1992, funny. we get the debut of Yu Yu Hakusho and Sailor Moon. Ooh. Oh, back in the day when people were obsessed with Dragon Ball Z, I was a Yu Yu Hakusho guy. All right. Now let's get to the. Sh- nice. uh, quickly get to the shows that debuted. Capital Critters, which I think I'm the only one that knows that show. Um, Nick Arcade. Mm-hmm. Tequila and Bay. Wow. I remember, I remember Tequila and Vanetti <laughs> only because I think it was, I think was it it was either Lupa or Brad it that Brad, did. Uh, it was Brad was Brad that did Tequila and Vanetti. Uh, the Dennis Miller show. Oh, I oh, love the Dennis oh, the HBO yeah, show. Was, yeah, that was, that was so good. good. Um, a show again. I'm sure I only watched because it was on syndication. Stunt Dogs. I actually have I've seen like stuff from that again. Yeah. One of those vague memories of like the end of its rerun cycle. Yeah. Uh, the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Oh God. Yeah. Ugh. Uh, Barney and Friends. Yeah. Oh, oh God. We're, we're, that, that didn't happen. Again? Ignore. Didn't happen yeah. we ignore that. Uh, Nick News, Tragic which part. later turned into Nick News W Five. Oh, God. The very short-lived Mary with Children spinoff, Vinny and Bobby. There was a spinoff? Oh, it's never go- it was never going to work cause it, because it lacked, it lacked two very important things. Three very important things. It lacked Al Bundy, and uh, it lacked um, 
uh, Kelly Bundy's breasts. Yep. It had that what? actually. Oh, oh, what? There were two spinoffs yes. that basically were the same thing. Yeah, there was Second Chance, and uh, or was it? Or was it? It was Vinny and was Bobby. It, was it was a top, top of the heap? heap. Yeah. Was it? It was Second Chance, Top of the Heap, and Vinny and Bobby. Yep. Um, because they they basically borrowed characters from each of them. I think um, Joey Lauren Adams was in all three of them actually. Yeah, she was. Um, my memory serves. But uh, and she basically <laughs> played the same character that she played on Married with Children because you know it yeah. was it was a whole big connected universe. But yeah, they um they basically were like what you know, they had like Pamela Anderson would show up and be like you know can you help me screw in this light bulb? And, oh, and the audience. <laughs> You know, like, oh, God. Yeah, so um, um, because that was, that, was, that was a different time. It was a different... T- the Married with Children era of television, and a little earlier than that, was the time when somebody could walk onto screen and you were allowed to have a woo track and yep. a laugh track. Yep. And now <laughs> I don't think you could get away with having a woo track because it's so demeaning to, to have somebody walk on and immediately you're supposed to have the entire audience go Woo! like it just that really doesn't fly anymore but that's what made those shows like really unusually crass and good was that they did the just it, track. regardless of the situation they they objectified people men women they belittled everybody pretty pretty equally so married with children while being absolutely a horrifically offensive show in a lot of ways is also one of those shows that is so perfectly balanced in that it makes fun of all things equally that a lot of shows can't do anymore because even if you try to make fun of everything you eventually touch on a subject that you're not allowed to make fun of anymore where that show in that time period they were just like I don't give a fuck. Yeah. We're going to make fun of men, women, dogs, children. Doesn't Dog matter. Children. Well, that was the beauty of Fox at the time was that that was how <laughs> they they etched out their like their place in the market. It was like where um everybody was, you know, like you had NBC, ABC and CBS. They were doing the the wholesome stuff and it's like, "Hey, here at Fox, they were doing the counterculture." You know, they had the Simpsons, and they had uh they had Married with Children and they had uh The Adventures of Beans Baxter. They had 21 Jump Street. They had all these shows that were so different from all the stuff that was on the other channels. And I remember at the time, um there was a whole big thing about how uh, they're like, you know, it's the 90s. We don't want the Cosby show. We want the Simpsons. And uh, it, it really was how uh, the market was reacting. And I mean, the it, it blew up. It was huge. It was uh, it, 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 that was a change it became in society. a competitor. Yeah, it was, a, it was a very big change in society. We did shift away from the Cosby wholesomeness and we shifted to uh, the the dysfunctional middle America Roseanne era where there was poor people on television living miserable yet happy lives where previously it was always well to do happy families and then so when there that was a very different we got television. the whole house mm. oh yeah. god yeah well that was because of uh, three men and a baby and then they they made the uh, the tv adaptation and that pretty much made the uh, the olsen twins somehow became like billionaires because of that and that that i'll never understand it's like because i mean they had they had so much marketing around them uh and then like once they they got a little bit older and everybody realized that they're not really good actresses and you know they they kind of grew up like everybody stopped paying attention to them they tried to have legitimate movie careers like they were in um beastly well one of them was in beastly and it was just terrible and now and, uh, a better actress yeah that's the thing now the youngest sister the one that wasn't really in the limelight is now a freaking you know superstar you know and she's yeah, a legitimately she's, good actress she's getting relegated to the to the kitty corner though mm. the, oh yeah she's gonna see yeah her and um it's scarlet witch yeah. and uh, loki are getting the disney plus show she was pissed mm-hmm. about it she said, oh, yeah. she's like, and I don't blame her. She's like, I've been around for, you know, I think at five movies at this point. She's like, I've been around, and, and now all of a sudden you bring in this this one girl. She has one movie, and now she's the face of Marvel. She's like, that's that ain't cool. 
you know? Yeah. I heard a rumor that it's not just her. It was There's a lot of the Marvel cast who are not happy with Brie Larson right now. Yeah. Uh, I heard Chris Evans wasn't particularly happy with it. But, it, you know, you, you kind of... Um, it, it's such a weird thing because they can't be too loud about it because it's like um, they, you know, you, you can be replaced. They're being and, professional about it. That's what they are doing, which is a certain girl is not doing. That is true. My favorite, She's being very unprofessional. She had, I think she, my favorite story was, I believe it was, someone made a comment about her new movie. They didn't really say anything he like that. said it was it. meh. And then Netflix, yeah, exactly. He, all he said was meh. And somehow she and Netflix went and teamed up to attack this one guy. So professionalism right there. Oh, oh yeah. God. Well, well, that's the, kind the, of the new, the new the new controversy though is the recent trailer for End Games where she has straight hair and a full face of makeup, and how unusual it is that she went from like this feminist, no makeup, natural beauty, uh, like that doesn't matter iconic character to now being like this modern era quote tarted up um pretty girl to be fair and how that doesn't really fit with the character that they previously wanted to establish that suddenly they were like yeah no new movie let's put her in makeup but to be fair i mean look at every adaptation that that scarlet uh, that um um Black Widow. Uh, yeah, Black I was Widow. also, also going to say, in to be fair, and I'm also kind of defending Brie Larson, oddly enough, in this. Like these are the same the people who complain about that. These are the same idiots who complain about Wonder Woman having shaved armpits. <laughs> I know. Come yeah. on. Bro. So when Seriously? I hear like about that, that's when I actually have to step in and defend Brie Larson. And go, guys, shut up. All right. All right get, <laughs> so when all you right, have getting back to... on track here, getting back on track. Yes. All right. Um, because we haven't even gone to the movies yet. Um, we, we, in 1992, we get Batman the Animated Series. Yes! Ooh. And the best series, best and, series that we created. Yep, and despite, yeah. and despite what UA Bull says, it gave us Harley Quinn. Yep. It did mm-hmm. give us Harley Quinn. Despite what he said. And there is nothing wrong with Harley Quinn. Mm-mm. Inherently. I, I actually have, What's wrong with Harley Quinn is have, the fans of... Because I actually have uh, <laughs> his quote. Harley Quinn began from a fucking Fox Kids Batman animated series, and it's fucking stupid. She's a not she's not a real Batman character, as far as I'm concerned. Who is this guy again? Uwe. Uwe he is um, a very very outspoken um, director of a lot of bad movies, but yes, the thing is, notoriously. But the thing is, and I've I've spoken to him on numerous occasions. I've I mean, and he's not a dumb guy, and he's given me like I even told him. I said, look, the first time I talked to him, uh, I talked I talked to him for like two hours. I'm like, I'll be honest with you. I'm like, you've made some terrible movies, and I said, I'm like, I just need to get that out there first and foremost. And he's like, Yeah, I understand. And he explained why he made these terrible movies, and he gave a lot of like he gave a lot of really valid reasons as to why they, the movies were terrible. It was like the, um, there was, it's a combination of the German tax loophole where, um, if you, if you're, let's say you, let's say, um, you had a $10 million movie okay. and the movie failed at the box office. You mm-hmm. could claim that 10 million and you would get back 20 million in Germany. Yeah. There was all it was this whole big like like thing that he was being that he was taking and he basically was able to use that to start up his studio. Now what happened was at the time uh there were like video game movies were very were rising in popularity mm-hmm. and they were able to um like he was able to talk to a lot of these studios who didn't know who he was at the time and get the rights to various smaller um, at the time, uh, licenses, I- IPs. Like he oh, got was Far Cry. Who... Okay. He got Far Cry and Blood Rain, and that's uh, the guy. This guy. Okay. Yeah, and uh, Alone in the Dark. You know, he he didn't get like Resident Evil and Metal Gear, and he didn't get the big ones. He got the smaller ones. Yeah. But when a studio looks at that, like they don't, you know, you get some seventy-year-old producer. They don't know the difference between uh, Blood Rain. 
and Metal Gear. So when they see that Blood Rain failed at the box office, all they see is that a video game movie failed at the box office, not a movie that is attached to a license that's not as popular as like a bigger thing. And so that was really what set back a lot of video game movies was because he put out so many of these and they were terrible and they all bombed. I mean, House of the Dead, Blood Rain, Alone in the Dark, Dungeon Siege, like they all flopped. And uh, that really ended up hurting video game uh, like adaptations. And a lot of studios didn't want to put in on that. Can I just say I'm actually shocked that you told him that his movies were terrible and he didn't challenge you to a boxing match? <laughs> because I guess that's it's... the rumors I heard was that apparently he was notorious for challenging his critics in a boxing match. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, he did that. It was, uh, it was a publicity thing because it, what happened was... Uh, now, the thing is, I told him uh, in a very polite manner. I was like, look... You're, I don't like and I was like look your movies they're bad like I'm not like you know like Sean Baby who was like you know these movies suck and they're awful and the worst things ever you know and uh, so what happened was uh, when he was kind of getting a lot of heat as they say uh, he went to a bunch of publications and was like uh, I would you know like to challenge this uh you know your your critic who badmouthed my my movie to a boxing match it was this heavily publicized thing well what he didn't tell them was that he was an amateur uh like i think uh whatever like welterweight champion or something <laughs> and so he's getting into the boxing ring with a a movie critic mm -hmm. and he beat the shit out of him you know <laughs> <laughs> so I think the I think he got into the ring with the one I don't remember the the guy I just remember Sean Baby was the one because Sean Baby was the only one who actually gave him like a run for his like I don't want to say a run for his money but he was the only one who was able to like kind of fight back like the first guy who he fought was just a, a mush who uh, he you know some guy who sits in front of a typewriter all day and uh, just just let him have it. And then uh, Sean Baby, who's actually fairly in, in like decent shape and whatnot, so he got it. And then after that, um, you know, all the uh, critics that were going to get into a boxing match with them, they pulled out. And uh, there's a documentary about it called uh, Raging Ball. If uh, <laughs> if you want to, if you want to hear more, uh, it's it's pretty interesting. All right. But he's an interesting guy. He really is. But uh, he's made some really bad movies. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um. We also got Goof Troop, Lamb Chop, Wild uh, Wild West Cowboys of the Moon Mesa, Eek the Cat, Beekman's World, Nickelodeon Guts, Mad About You, Dog City. Beekman's World? Yes. And the Uncanny X-Men. Better than... <gasps> yes! Uncanny than the, the science guy. Yes, I, I, I love Beekman's World more than Bill Nye, yes. Yes. Well, Bill Nye can suck a dick compared to Beekman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can we just go back to... Da -na 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 -na. <laughs> Yes, uh, which is uh, actually a Whitney Houston song. Really? Yes. Wait, 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 wait. What? Yeah, um, one of Whitney Houston's songs, if you actually listen to the uh, instrumental, it's the Uncanny X-Men theme. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Um, huh. All right. Uh, Did they get sued over it? No, because uh, it sounds just different enough to be different. Uh, it's like like vanilla ice uh, yeah. and uh, ice ice baby and yeah. and this din 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 din. It's changed Under enough. Okay. Uh huh. Um, TV shows that ended this year: James Bond Jr., Drexel's Class, Salute Your Shorts, The Golden Girls, Superboy, Vinny and Bobby, Tequila and Benetti, Night Court, Saturday Night's Main Event, Widget, The World Watcher, and MacGyver. Wow, I'm actually watching like not was... the second, but no, I'm watching uh, MacGyver, like from the beginning. Oh no, the, it is great. I love MacGyver too. I know it. I I once had this theory that he would like be the greatest like you know shop teacher imaginable. <laughs> nice. <laughs> or science teacher, like you would always learn something new and practical use for said thing. It is amazing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, getting into movies now. We're almost to video games, so don't... Awesome. All right. No, the movies um, in 1992. Aladdin, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, Batman mm -hmm. Returns, Lethal Weapon 3, A Few Good Men, 
Sister Act, The Bodyguard, Wayne's World, Basic Instinct, A League of Their Own, Unforgiven, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, uh, Under Siege, Patriot Games, Bam, Bam, yeah. uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, Ooh. White Men Can't Jump, mm. The Snooze Fest That Was Last of the Mohicans, uh, Boomerang, Scent of a Woman, and The Crying Game. Uh, Last of the Mohegans, year. was that adapted from the book? I'm sure it was. Okay, book was... the Books are always better in that case, in my opinion. Yep. I always... There was a um, a Jay Leno bit about The Last of the Mohegans that was, uh, that was really funny, where he's talking about... Because The Last of the Mohegans was in, like, the top ten, like, highest grossing films of the year, and it was like, you know, studios always love, uh, you know, sequels, so this is The Last of the Mohegans, but... They're going to go and find some Mohicans somewhere so they can crank out a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, you got any Mohicans over there? We need, you know, it's, the way yeah. he did it, it was very, you know, I was like, all right, that's good. All but right. yeah, yeah, I, no, I no, didn't I care. I didn't particularly care for it. Um, but I know a lot of people like legitimately loved it. Uh, I, I just couldn't get, I don't know. I, I'm not really big into that kind of, uh, you know, cowboys and Indians and that kind of stuff. Like yeah. it's, it's, that's never really been my, my, my jam, yeah. I guess. Um, okay. Um, no, so fair enough. Um, other notable movie releases. Hey, hey Gif, ducks fly together. Ducks fly together. Quack, 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 Mr. Ducksburg. <laughs> yep. I love up. that. Mighty Ducks was absolutely the probably the greatest movie ever because it took it took the the less important sheen and made him important. Put him in the only movie series I think he'll be known for, except uh, I think he worked with Charlie in Men at it, Work. It Men at Work. Um, what was it? And uh, it also gave us uh, Pacey Witter before Dawson's Creek. Right. Um. We got Goldberg, who is just absolutely the best <laughs> character in my opinion. Um, and I mean, it's it's a, it's a sports movie. Back when sports movies were allowed to be decent, before they just became a saturated element. But it was a sports movie that 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 had like real world implications on a major sports yeah. net, like a uh, uh, institute. And I don't think there are a lot of movies in the in that genre that could actually say that they impacted their sport. Wait, um, how? The Anaheim Mighty Ducks, bro. Yeah. yeah no, I, again, I. It, it wasn't just. It wasn't like Bad News Bears, where they just like they just arbitrarily, like picked a random team. Picked a, they were like, "Well, I make a little league movie." No, they they made a pee wee hockey movie. That had like a real world implication on an actual sports team. Oh, cool! So I mean that that worked very well in their favor compared to like other movies that were coming out at the time where we had like like the '90s was so full of horrible like if the Air Bud franchise and all that. Garbage. Oh, all right. yeah, that dog can, was can great. Think, let's talk about Air, fuck Air Bud. <laughs> I'm a dog person. He played like eight different sports. He went yeah, to like, they the really... or some shit. Oh no, no, the movies are shit. I'm just talking about the dog. The, the, the dog, dog was good was, because it put up with that dog. crap. Well, I think that it was probably different. more. Yeah, it's because it's more than one dog. Yeah. <laughs> there actually is somebody who did like a study who shows that like the fur length and color on Buddy changes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> from like scene to scene indicating that they had like different dogs trained for different things and they did not look exactly the same right. so there was no one buddy there were like multiple stunt dogs right. okay. we, we also got reservoir dogs Ooh. Ooh. Uh, my cousin Vinny yes um, yeah. Joe Pesci you know, the original Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie uh, the 16 can or god the, uh, um, the, the Joss Whedon like what yeah. He, like, his vision, it's still, like, I like the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie. Uh, I thought Christy Swanson did a really good job. Oh, yeah, totally. But it's, and, oh, God, and the Paul Rubens, the, eh, <laughs> eh. Oh, it's classic, but really, there was a lot of studio meddling, and the movie ended up being not like tonally what he wanted and then everybody was like what and then the show came out and was like oh okay we get it now yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Wait, you mean a studio meddled with Joss Whedon? <gasps> Shocking. I know, right? Scandalous. That's never happened every single time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we also got Alien 3. Ooh. Oh, another eh. major studio. Ma- There's it, a great clip. You know, it had yeah. potential. It was no aliens, though. If I'm, you I'm see, not saying it was great. I'm just saying it had potential. Uh, there's a clip that I, I eventually am going to do a video on Alien 3 because there's a fantastic story behind it. But um, David Fincher has at the end of his rope and he's sitting there and he's got the, the director megaphone and he's like, I forget, I'm paraphrasing, but it's something along the lines of, how are Fox in business when they're run by fucking morons <laughs> or something? He's had it because they they really really messed with that movie. Uh, the end result was was nowhere near what he was trying to do. Yeah. Well, the Aliens franchise in general has been plagued by bad production decisions, shitty um, production schedules, slashed budgets. I mean, every one of those movies, if you look through the history and production of them, has been amazing to the point that it's surprising a movie actually made it out and it wasn't shelled as just uh, an expense lost on the company's behalf. Because Mm -hmm. each one of those movies has inevitably, when you look through its history, had... um, drama behind the scenes or disasters in production or the the budget gets cut or the time schedules crunched to an absurdly short window of time to pump the movie out uh those movie that whole franchise is just a fucking disaster and the fact that there are so many good alien movies in the early part of that franchise is astounding because the turn that it took when they finally started wanting to make alien movies compared to when they just were trying to say, yeah, no, fuck it, crap another one of these movies out so we can get it out. And now they try, and each one of these movies is fucking worse than the last one. Yeah, Covenant. I left the theater, like, just going, um, what? Fucking, uh, Prometheus? Prometheus. I, I liked Prometheus because the thing is, Prometheus was not an alien movie. Prometheus was a movie with uh, alien elements in it, but it wasn't... It was a specific. prequel. But I mean, it, but the thing was, it originally was not... Like, it was... That's why they called... See, the problem was, Prometheus was not an alien movie. That's why they called it Prometheus. But then what happened was, everybody went into Prometheus expecting an alien movie, and then were mad when it wasn't. Um, so, I was mad that it was a fucking alien movie. If it well, hadn't it, had that proto xenomorph at the end, I would have been like, "This is a pretty decent psychological, like, space adventure." The moment I was like, "Ah, oh, fucking, whatever, alien dog human hybrid thing," like, I just, I was done at that. That's when it lost me. But, really, but I, well, actually, it lost me when I when I learned that there was a uh, weird progenitor alien Jesus that Jesus was a fucking oh uh, well like, yeah. alien race. Yeah, it was. It's. I, I mean, it kind of meddled with a lot of things. Essentially made by an android, essentially, or you know, he helped us, you know, evolve them and all that. I don't know. There was just it kind of t- to me. It, t- it took away some of the mystery of the xenomorphs. I'm kind of glad I didn't see this movie. Okay, then... uh, it's so bad. It also, so why did the many captain of the ship have a it? medical thing that was only made for men, even though the captain was a girl? No, the female one I think was broken, and so she had to use the men's one. I think that was the. the no, scene. it was the captain. Wasn't it the captain's personal medical thing? And the captain was a girl. Uh, was the captain? I don't. I thought the captain died, and she was like the. I thought that the main captain was a woman. She had her own personal, personal like medical thing, whatever you call it, and then the the female lead had to use it to like basically get her stomach had the you know get the alien it, ripped it out was, of the stable it shut. Was, the Black Ooze becoming the first Xenomorph that somehow we're supposed to learn down the line decides that it's easier to face fuck somebody with a giant hand crab monster. Yeah, that, that was the other thing sport. that killed like, me. Like, that, like how, Give me how, the like, face fucking monsters anytime. Uh, <laughs> well, what else we got, Rick? Uh, or, as we know from Spaceballs, I will also accept uh, Bad Soup. Right. Hello, my baby. Hello, Hello my honey. From Bad Soup. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, we also That's got... That's super being face-fucked by an alien. Yes. We also got Death Becomes Her. 
Okay. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. We then we then we get a movie that we all love, Army of Darkness. Yes. What? The gold that it is. Yeah. It's so freaking good. Yeah. Um then we get Poison <laughs> Ivy. Oh, the uh the the thriller that they were uh they were very 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 uh, protective of this movie, they're like, you know, it is not a horror movie. It is a thriller, and uh, it actually like this was when they were trying to uh, really push Drew Barrymore, yep. like an uh, as as an adult, and uh, uh, Katia yeah. uh, Katia Rubin at the Wait, time. There was a thriller she, called Poison Ivy. Yes, and it wasn't there about is. who you think it is. There's well, three of them. No, there's four. four. Well, the thing is. The first Poison Ivy is it's a it's a thriller, and then every Poison Ivy after that is exactly what a lot of people think that Poison like people think it's like you know uh, kind of a soft core um, like slight horror movie when really the first movie is a thriller and then the second movie is let's see Alyssa Milano's tits the third one is let's see uh, what's her name Jamie Presley get naked all over the place and the fourth one is pretty much just softcore porn like <laughs> they're they're really they're entertainingly bad yeah. but the first okay. one is like a legit uh, like good uh, like thriller it's yeah. it's a really it's it's well done there's and I don't even think there is any nudity. There's implied sex in the movie, but I'm pretty sure there isn't any nudity. I don't think there is no. Uh, then we get Beethoven. Okay. Oh, oh God. Oh. Yeah. I know. And 50 million sequels of Beethoven. Um, then we yeah. get one of my favorite movies, Single White Female. Because I love that movie to death. Um, mm-hmm. Then we get Lawnmower Man. Oh, <laughs> awesome! I love the Lawnmower Man. Such a good movie. The game is horrible. Even the the, direct, the director's cut's even better because it adds like twenty minutes in. They cut out like the whole beginning right. with uh, the monkey escaping from the medical facility, and uh, it's uh, it it steals a gun. It's yeah. like it's that such a good. That monkey's got a gun. Yeah, I know. Ah! And, he, and he's got like a VR headset on, and yeah, then we get but, th- then we get a movie I wish was better. Cool world. Oh, there's another, yeah, another movie that had potential, but yeah. actually that one had a lot of studio meddling. Oh, mm-hmm. Like originally, because well, you know the history about that movie, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah, Ralph Bakshi movie. wanted yeah Bakshi wanted an R-rated movie, and the studio wanted a P movie, and they just fought, and they uh, you know they just they kept hitting in the middle, and that's one you can't you can't you got to have one or the other, you know. And it, it just did not work because this tonal shifts all over the place. Yep. Uh, then we get stop or my mom will shoot. <laughs> Such a corny movie. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> uh, then we get stay tuned, which I love. I like stay tuned. Stay tuned. That was the uh, that, that just came in on Blu-ray actually. Oh, uh, nice. The the John Ritter yeah. movie. Yeah. It's it's a lot of fun. Yes. It's not as much fun as uh, Mom and Dad will save the world. No. But it's no, still no, good. No. Uh, then we get sidekicks. Oh, the little Kung Fu movie. movie. Yep. Uh, oh wait. Oh. Oh, was that? Oh, that was the one with with. Uh, was it Jonathan? Not Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Jonathan Brandis. The, the guy, Jonathan. Well, poor Jonathan Brandis. Oh. Where he's daydreaming about Chuck Norris this, and yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a good movie. Then, uh, hey Cecil, uh, we get um, Doctor Giggles. Hmm. I am doing an updated video about Dr. Giggles. Fantastic. I'm uh, talking with some people in the production about it. Um, there's a, there's a, I don't want to spoil it, but th- that there is a great history that uh, goes along with that movie where there is actually another movie out there that is the original script of Dr. Giggles. Oh, cool. Um, then I, we get a movie that I was introduced by you, Cecil, Mind Warp. Oh, I love Mind Warp. I just, and I found out, after the fact, after I did the video, I found out that a friend of mine knew uh, one of the effects guys that worked on the film. I'm like, why didn't you tell me? I would have oh, talked. That's so cool. I, so I might, I may eventually do a follow-up on that one where uh, I talk a little bit more about it. But yeah, Mind Warp is a really cool movie. I, I just Bruce saw Campbell. a couple, yeah, Bruce Campbell and um, Angus Grimm. Angus Grimm. Yep. Angus Grimm. Angus Grimm is, he was one of the 
nicest guys, man. For because I told him, I'm like, I'm like, look, uh, I was terrified of you when I was little. I'm like, you were the scare, and he he could not have been nicer. He was so he like gave uh, like he autographed a picture for my wife and gave it to her for like no charge and got took a picture with her and stuff. Is he's like. He's like, would the lady like a picture? And my my wife was like, <laughs> you know, he was so super duper cool. Yeah, really nice. I was that, so that, sad yeah, when he that died. He's actually on Amazon Prime right now f- for free. Oh, nice. Yeah, if you if anybody hasn't seen it, man, you want a really neat kind of futuristic post apocalyptic movie that is not your typical post apocalyptic movie. It's definitely worth checking out, and it's got Bruce Campbell and Angus Scrimm in it. I mean, you can't go wrong. It, the guy sounds like he like stood up and apologized to you for scaring you like that's how, <laughs> he, like, that, that's how he's you're painting him as like that's how nice he was <laughs> he didn't but I, I was just like uh i was just like when i was little i was terrified of you and i'm like oh and he's just like oh i'm nice you know it was that's awesome like, yeah he was great uh then we get dr mordred Ah, that was the uh, that was supposed to be Doctor Strange, and they lost license. Yep. And uh, they already started um, they already started working on it. So they're like, "Well, hell, we'll just call him Doctor Mordred and make the same movie, but we'll just call him a different name." Name, yeah. Um, then we get Dragon Ball Z or Tuna of Cooler. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. And then a, a movie I'm only familiar with because I kept seeing this. It at the at the uh, video store and the well, like Doctor Eagles, I, I kept seeing this uh, box art so many times. It's Body Chemistry Two: The Voice of a Stranger. I don't think I, I don't think I've seen t- or I've seen a bunch of the Body Chemistry movies because I think there's like five of them. Yes. but I can't remember if I've seen two or not. I'm just familiar with the box art for the. I'm just familiar with the cover. Mm. Hey all, Retro Rick here. Uh, first, I would like to thank Cecil Trachtenberg for being on this show. Glad we talk about the, the years of 1992 and then 1993. Um, but if you're sick of hearing my dull voice in the middle of these episodes and just want to hear the full uncut episodes with no ad breaks, hop onto our Patreon, where for just one dollar a month, which is our EV tier, you get these episodes live after we record unedited, uncut and you could hear what you are missing like Cecil and Fanboy GIF rant about Star Wars or Sammy Soundwave's rant on his recent D&D campaign also on our Patreon we have special features like our friendly neighborhood tier where for just $5 a month you'll be credited in the show as, as, a, as a thank you for helping us and it shows you like us uh, we'll also send you of your choice either a random DVD which could be a movie or a TV show or if you don't like that we will send you a two pack of comic books we also have for $15 a month our limited edition broken caffeinated tier which include a shout out on the show we'll brag about you on social media you can help us think up an idea for a show and as a special feature our artist Deej will draw you a pop cult crossover of your choosing of his discretion uh, like Doctor Who and Pokemon or like Night Vale and Supernatural or whatever you like or if you don't want to support us that way but you still want to support us we have a coffee page a PayPal page and a little store on eBay that sells anime, DVD, manga, comic books, knickknacks, trinkets. Check us out. Also, we are brought to you by JList.com, where you can buy stuff in Japan like imported video games, cosplay, candy. We're, by using our special code, you get 5% off your entire order. This code is usable so you can use it again and again and share it. Also, by Kawaii Box, we get a bunch of cute gifts from Japan sent to you each month. By Humble Bundle, where they just will send you tons of great old and new video games, which is really cheap. And they also now include 
Nintendo Switch games. Also by Valve's World of Cards and Comics, located in Connecticut, where they have 50% off bins, tournaments, and other cool things. Uh, their address is listed in the description box below, or go to Bobby's World TTC.com. Or maybe you don't like any of those things, and you like drinking tea, for instance. Head over to thegreenteahouse.com, where they have a large variety of healthy teas, all natural, and get free shipping off your order over dollars. And if you like going to conventions, our co-host Hamlock Inc., who's not on for this show, is the CEO of Popco Anime Con, located in Framingham, Massachusetts, this year at August 3rd and 4th in Framingham, Massachusetts. The hotel is a castle. Looks like a castle, feels like a castle. Head over to Pop Call Anime Con for more info. And now, back to your video game show, already in progress. Alright, let's finally get into video games. Woo! Yay! Yeah, alright. All right, um, in Las Vegas, Nevada, the Winter Consumer Electronics Show is held, and Nintendo announces that a CD-ROM drive for the Super Nintendo will be introduced in January of 1993. Yeah. <laughs> and this wait, 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 wait. one of their biggest That's... competitors ever. No, wait, mm-hmm. wait. I, I have a prediction. Um, warn them in the future that Sony will exist. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they really blew that one because man, uh, if if they imagine if they would have accepted the the CD ROM drive, like there there would be like a whole different landscape of video games right now because yeah. Sony PlayStation potentially might not have ever existed. Oh, and yeah. it, would been, it would probably be Microsoft versus Nintendo right now. Yeah. Um, but I wonder, though, I mean, like, uh, Microsoft got into the game more because of Sony than because of Nintendo. So, I mean, it's... It's, it's like Blu-ray problems, right? Yeah, well, they... Blu-ray? No, Sam, it wasn't... I think you're forgetting about the great and masterful Soldier Boy consoles... I know, I know. <laughs> that yeah, he got he got sued over and that whole wonder yeah, that whole mess. You can but, play uh, Smash Brothers on a Soldier Boy. Um, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and the fact that like people were believing this, like really, people. He hasn't yeah. done anything relevant in the past few years. Do you think he really wants to do this? <laughs> I yeah, I, I just don't understand some people that will you know they'll fall for anything but yeah that that was nuts uh the nintendo of america lowers the suggested price of the super nintendo from 199.95 to 179.95 and <laughs> game boy from 89.95 to 79.95 bargain at any price yep but let's yeah. not forget one of the you greatest build a house out of game boys because those things are fucking bricks Oh yeah, indestructible. That and Nokia phones, yeah, are the two electronics that will survive a zombie apocalypse. Okay. Important question: Has anyone been to the Nintendo store in New York, where yes. they actually have on display the uh, Game Boy that survived a war? Yep, it survived <laughs> the bombing, and it can still play games to this day. Yeah, and wow. they just have it. Yeah, they have it hooked up to a battery pack just to show that it still works. But like everything about it is the original casing, and wow. the thing looks like it was melted to sh- hell and back. But the buttons look like they still work. It's, the thing is like the precursor to Nokia. I'm not even joking. Well, Nintendo, if you actually go into like some of the making of like when they make their consoles, like all times the directors in charge or the people you know head of making the next systems will tell the designers, listen, this system or whatever, the handheld, must be able to survive like a 5-foot fall or a 10-foot drop or whatever in case someone drops it. And yeah. it, it would be... It's, it's like the standard regulation. So, you know, aside, you know, so even though Nintendo has had its faults, I can't deny that they can... When they succeed, they really succeed. Oh, yeah, no. It's, it's almost like they realize, hey, clumsy children are going to be playing these. Make sure that they can take a slight beating. There was a uh, a thing on G4 uh back in the day where they had a um an Xbox, a PS2 and a GameCube. Morgan and they, Von Webb. Morgan yeah. Von Webb, yes. 
and she hit him with a sledgehammer and she dropped him off of like a platform and at the end of the day the only the one game, that still worked the was GameCube. the GameCube. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah Nintendo the, stuff their standard such regulation process is to make sure that it can survive five foot drop. Yeah. Knowing that that's more than a child's height by several feet. Yep. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, get more into these games. Yep. Um, <laughs> Atari shuts down sales of Atari 2600 and the 7800 sisters. We knew you well. Yep. Wait, that's out for you, boy. That's when they shut it down. Yep. Wow, into the 90s. Um, you know, what, that's know not a been... bad way to go. That it, it lived a long and good life. Yep. It really did. Um, Sega lowers the price of the Genesis from 190 to 149. Ooh. And, and include Sonic the Hedgehog. Mm. One or two? The first one. Uh, one, because two had just come out that year, so I'm pretty sure they were including one as part of the deal. Yeah. Because yeah, they would include two. It wasn't at that point where they'd include uh, a game with um, a console like we do now, because usually that's done for shittier games that they're trying to get people to buy by being like, yeah, you get fucking Madden with your fucking PS3. Like, okay. Nobody wants to but you get it. Back in the day, though, um, with with the the Super NES, actually, there was a time where it was like going from NES to Sega Master System uh, to Genesis and all that. Like they always came with like a really top shelf game. Like uh, you know, Super NES launched with um, uh, Super, Super Mario, Mario World, Stars. and then. Uh, Genesis uh, launched with Altered Beast, and then later they they oh. came out with Sonic because Sonic came up being their uh, you know their mascot. Uh, it wasn't until like the PlayStation and Nintendo sixty four generation where they got away from that, where it was like just the system, and then you would buy whatever game. And now they're kind of getting back to that, not with um, the launch system, but like uh, you know the late you know after the game's been you know after it's been out for a year or two. When they're throwing yeah, in the pack in, getting or bundled, the, yeah, yeah, the bundles and stuff. So, and uh, uh, in September, a U.S. court appeals rules that reverse engineering is a legitimate business practice. The ruling comes in the Nintendo versus Atari copyright infringement case. The court rules, however, that Atari had infringed on Nintendo copyright for other reasons. Hmm. Oh, wait, so were they the, trying? Wait, was this the copyright thing, or yeah. was this when they ma- when they tried to make their own uh, their their own uh, cartridges? Make their own cartridges. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, I know. I know. A case you're talking about. Okay. Uh, Tangan loses its appeal against Nintendo and has to recall its game cartridge for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, also in September, Nintendo loses an appeal against the decision allowing Galoob Toys to manufacture and sell the Gajini. Awesome. Oh, yeah. I remember that because it was, that was like a big deal because it was yeah. like, you were able to like alter the game code and they, they got very angry about that. And it's like, look, but it's not like, it's not affecting it, it's doing it in lieu, you know, in between yeah. to the system. And, yeah. it, and it allowed me to, to freaking get to the end of Ninja Gaiden. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, um, I mean, like that, wow. Because, I mean, Nintendo's games were built to, you know, take a long time to beat. So to them, that's like, okay, now you're kind of killing part of our business model. I I usually didn't, like, use the, the Game Genie and stuff unless it was a game that was impossible or if it was like, all right, you know what? I want to do like, you know, I want to do some wacky stuff with it. Right. Uh, right. You know, you know, I want to play with the game after I've already beaten it like fifty times. Fair enough. Uh, then October thirteenth, Philips released the CDI multimedia home console. <laughs> uh-huh. And we all know what happened to that. Yep. Um, the Amiga uh, twelve hundred computer is released, and its final lower cost Amiga model before Commodore's bankruptcy. Oof. Uh, oh Commodore. my god, that thing was a goddamn train. Mm-hmm. Um, then Nintendo releases the Super Soap for the Super Nintendo. Nice, the bazooka. Yes. I loved the bazooka. Did I you know. see the, the the guy on uh, on GDQ who uh, was able to play 
Um, what was the one, what game that came with it? Uh, uh, um, oh my god. Um, I know which game you, you're talking about because I own... Yoshi I Safari? Own it. No. No, it was the shooting one. Well, yeah. which uh, he played, he was able to beat the game by bouncing the it off of a mirror. <laughs> so he was looking at a mirror over his shoulder and he was like shooting the, the, the gun. I, I was like, I'm like, this is amazing. Like, <laughs> How do you do this? Why would you do this? But sir, you are amazing. <laughs> yes. Um, for com- let's see, companies that came out this year, we got Adventure Soft, known for Simon the Sorcerer series. Cool. Um, AC ASC Games, formerly based in Darien, Connecticut. Um, they were the ones that released Grand Theft Auto for MS DOS and uh, Windows for- in North America. Ooh. Paving the way for millions of children to swear and scream obscenities as they shoot people with bazookas. Yep. <laughs> um, they're also known for Sanitarium for uh, Microsoft Windows. Ah, that's a really good adventure game. That it is. And Ten Pin Alley for Sony PlayStation in North America, which ended, which ended the company in 2000. Oh. Uh, then we get Crystal Dynamics. Uh, the first developers of the 3DO, their company's mascot was Gex the Gecko. Until yes, uh, oh God, I hated that. Everything about oh. that game was, and that character and that franchise is infuriating. Oh, but it was Gex. When it, uh, oh, who was the comedian that um, uh, Dana Gould? Yes, Dana Gould did the voice for Gex. Yeah, but oh, that I was Gex. It. Enter but the it was, was it, it's so. It was just one of those games that was merely created so that way as the character's walking around, it can blurt out random pop culture nonsense. It, it's like it's like playing Leisure Suit Larry now. You go, yeah, there's kind of a nostalgia to it because it's so bad, but it just it's so horrifically dated in all of the pop culture references that it's almost completely unplayable. They're, yeah. also, they're I, also known for Legacy of Kane and Tomb Raider. Oh, oh Legacy of Kane! Hell yeah! Brought a soul reaper. Yes. One of the that, and, and polygonal oh, tits. Yeah. Let's not forget about that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, then we get D three, mm-hmm. the D three publisher, um, which made every Ben Ten game. Their <laughs> uh, uh, Earth Defense Force. <laughs> Onichambara Bikini Samurai Squad. Oh, mm-hmm. I love the Onichambara. Oh, they had like a they had like a real plethora of quality games. Oh, Cecil, have you ever seen the Onichambara movie? Yeah, no. I own it. Okay. Of course. Why? <laughs> Why? Because one Why? Because, because I, I, I am a, a connoisseur of fine entertainment. Yes. <laughs> you couldn't get through that, could you? The pussy. You could not get through that. Uh, it's uh. It is a. It's actually um, less gratuitous than the video game. Yeah, it's incredibly oh, wow. non-gratuitous, but it's just really poorly written, directed, and filmed. <laughs> but it's yeah. so funny. But I, I'm I'm kind of used to that. Yeah. Then they also made the the incredibly incredibly awful Schoolgirl Zombie Hunter game. Oh, uh, you know, I got that. Lollipop uh, No. No, not no. It's called Schoolgirl Zombie Hunter. Oh, okay. Yeah, I need to show I, you that I video, got Sam. that it's, uh, for... I got it for, like, eight bucks off of Gamefly. Um, just because I was like, you know what? I'll stream this one night when I need to, you know, throw something on. Uh, and I haven't played it yet, so I don't know. I can't I can't say... I know I've seen... It It looks like uh, Onichan Bar with guns. But worse which, hit detection. It's, it's got horrible hit detection. Oh, oh no. Yeah. The, and, uh, D3 I feel like that plagued the, 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 that time, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. D three. Well, there were a well, few school, years well, school there Zombie where Hunter... hitboxes were fucked. Well, the thing is, school. That's the, the thing, though. Schoolgirl Zombie Hunter is only like maybe two years old. Yeah. So it's not like it's a. It's not like it's a game that uh, you know was was out a long time ago and just was bad. It was like no, this is current and it's bad. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> that's also, depressing. D three is also known for. Uh, the Neo Geos Evangelion Pachinko series. <laughs> Wait a minute, is that when you actually like get a good score or something in Pachinko? It plays um the event. Yep. Evangelion. Yay! 
I just guessed that. I feel so Which happy. Which is back on Netflix currently, I think, yeah. I heard. Yeah. Um, we also God, had it's... Digital Illusion C, now EA Digital Illusions. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jupiter Corporation, known for the Game Boy Camera. Pokemon Pinball. Yeah. Woo! Uh, oh, such a good game. Such an game. underrated pinball simulator. Uh, mm. Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. Uh, no. Okay, uh, as, with uh, Square Enix. It, not a terrible game, but I don't recommend. Yeah. Pokemon, it, Pinball, Ruby, and Sapphire. Wait, this is 90... Or is this the company no, that... No, just the, the, co- the companies and the games they came out with. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, remember, do you remember when you had the, the Pokemon... Do you remember when you had the... The Nintendo camera, the Game Boy, and the printer, uh, and just printed horrible, horrible low grade. Actually, wasn't there pictures. a rapper who had a very famous cover made because of one of those? Probably. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Sounds sounds I like a story. Know. I yeah. It's it's one of those like pop culture things you can find on like Watch Mojo or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I used to I used to have a whole bunch of the uh, the clear plastic like a uh, clamshell game boy cases and each one of my game boy cases and i think i still have one of them had a picture printed from a pokemon from from the um the the game boy camera with like little pokemon on it or little like zelda characters because it had all the little sprites that you could put into the image to kind of gussy it up yeah and uh and each one of my games had had that i loved that printer and camera that thing's i'm so disappointed that that they didn't do more with that before we reached like the modern era of gaming where cameras are just kind of commonplace yeah. because it was a little ahead of its time yeah. to be like here have a camera and a printer that connects to your fucking game console yeah. uh, then we get Cronus Digital Entertainment known for Fear Effect 1 and 2 okay uh, oh they're, nice they are also responsible for the animated Spider-Man TV series Yes. Oh, where Spider Man couldn't hit anybody. Yes. He w- um, we, It's actually funny because I follow some of the writers uh, for the Spider Man animated series, and they would talk about how basically Fox would keep sending them notes after notes, like stupid. It would be always stupid stuff, like when Spider Man swings, he can't like hit a pigeon or something like that. And Is that why they always have those weird cutaway scenes with yeah, him? Yeah, it's why he only ever kicked people and, or web-swing them. He's In the entire series, Spider-Man's maybe punched two people in the entire anime series, but it, it was actually hilarious as these guys rant about like how Fox Kids had like such strict rules, uh, but when you think about how Batman and series was on Fox at one point, but they didn't seem to care about censorship. Yeah. Uh, then we get Rebellion Developments. Um, we got Alien vs. Predator for the Jaguar. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Let's, uh, th- the less said, the better. Uh, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. Ooh. Star Wars Battlefront Elite Squadron. Okay. Hmm. And the disappointing Never Dead. Was that oh was that the game where you played this guy where you could just you could take pieces of your yep. body yep off oh, okay mm-hmm. okay I, yeah I remember I remember I, about that. It stream I was actually interested in it I streamed it from start to finish and yeah, um, I was on that stream I was like oh, were you <laughs> I was so like this game because I had played it like maybe like a month before and I was like mm-hmm. so disappointed because I always wanted to play this game because it looked so cool then I was just. Uh, this game's horrible. I like well, the, the idea, the, but uh. yeah, the yeah, the 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 game it was a great idea, and I really wouldn't mind for them to give it another shot. But apparently, uh, you were made out of graham crackers, and uh, you you would fall apart if a light breeze would hit you, and then like so you're like you're fighting and you're shooting with a gun, and now your head is on the floor, and you're rolling over to find the rest of your body parts. And I'm like, oh my god! It, like I understand they had to kind of do something because you're you basically you can't die. Yeah. So, but they made it so that ninety percent of the time you're like uh, you know an arm and a leg on the floor traveling around trying to find your other body parts, <laughs> and it just it got so. And then the last boss, what I think I fought the the last boss took me like an hour because I'd be Oof. fighting him. 
and then I would get like blown apart, and then I'd have to go get all my body parts back, and then I'd shoot, and then right when I got all my body parts back, his his uh, you know his soft spot would cover up, and I couldn't shoot him anymore. And I'm like, oh god! I and at this because I was playing it, I was like, I was determined to beat it that night, and like three or four in the morning, and I'm like, I just want to win so I can <laughs> sleep. I need to sleep. <laughs> Uh, then we have one of my favorite companies, Silicon Knights. Uh, received for Blood Omen Legacy of Kane. Awesome. Two human. Okay. And yes. Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem. Yes. I Another adore great one. that game so damn much. I am amazed that uh, that hasn't uh, been kind of remastered Same. and put on like yeah. EO. Or some, you know, because it would because it was a, a a GameCube exclusive. A lot of people have just never played it yeah. because GameCube really didn't do that well. Yeah. Um, that's one it's of, a that's shame. One of their, like hidden gems, like uh, Project Number Three. Mm-hmm. Uh, then yeah, we- like GameCube had some had some, like that. Geist. Uh, there were a a few like really good GameCube games, and like uh, oh god, they just they. You know, they just they they've flown in under the radar. I think maybe some people can play them with like emulators and stuff. Yeah. But uh, then we get the company Treasure, which sadly is no longer around. Uh, they were responsible for Gundar Heroes, Warrior World, Sin and Punishment, and their greatest game, Mischief Makers. Hmm. Well, War wait, Warrior World was this the one that was on the Game Boy? Um, I believe so. Yes. Oh, those are such good games. Yes. Okay, yeah. n- now let's actually look into the games that came out in 1992. Alone in the Dark. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry, cool. wrong one, but that's a good game. Yes. Uh, are yeah. we talking about, the, talking about the PC one, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Attack of yeah the not, not the one where you had to click your buttons and click your eyes. eyes. Yep. That Attack Resident Evil 4 ripoff, yeah. Um, Alone in the Dark, Attack of Killer Tomatoes, Asterix, based off the French comic. Okay. Mm. Uh, Bucky O'Hare. Mm-hmm. Ah. That game. The, the arcade, rabbit. the arcade version one. Yes. yes. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, that was a that was you know a really cool beat 'em up. Where we're yeah with the with the rabbit. <laughs> uh, Contra Three nice. Alien Wars. Ah, oh, I still love that game. Cool World. <laughs> oh boy, licensed games. Very. Um, Chuck Rock. <laughs> uh, just ask a very dumb question about that one. Sure. Do you, do you th- have to th- chuck a rock in that game? Um, sometimes. You okay. you, ca- you kind of had to chuck a lot of things. You were essentially a cave ma- a caveman with a big belly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, a game I'm Thumb- sure every laid on there here. Chips Challenge. I have not. Ooh, I have not. If you Chips if, Challenge. If you, if you it, Google image it. As soon as you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, give me a second. I'm looking Chips this up. Chips challenge? Yeah. Okay. Um, Away we go. I hope that you're going to mention probably one of the best arcade games that was ever created. Oh, I'm sure I will. It's, it'll be down here. It the, looks the, like uh, Minesweeper. The X-Men arcade game? Yeah, it'll be down here. Mm-hmm. Uh, this looks like Minesweeper. Sort game. of. The yeah, it does. Oh, wow. 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 Okay. Huh. Um, the point-and-click game Dune, based off uh, Jodorowsky's movie. They and, had a video game? Yeah, and they, they actually had two of them. Yeah, same year. Um, Darkwing Duck. Yeah, let's get dangerous. Uh, we talk, we're talking about the Capcom version? Yes, yeah, for the uh, no. Nice. Uh, Dragon Ball Z, Legend of Super Saiyan. God. Super Double Dragon. Uh, hmm. Oh, Double Dragon, nice. Yes, uh, a game nobody ever, n- nobody has played but me. Uh, Defenders of Dimatron City. That sounds awesome. Uh, <laughs> it, it does. It, it kind of does. And d- there's a cartoon based on it too. <laughs> I was about to say it sounds like a cartoon. The only bad problem with every time you get one of your players gets hit, they're locked in jail. You have to go restart the level with another character. Wasn't that the Animaniacs game? Uh, it sounds like, yeah. Um, you had uh, Die Hard the arcade game, which I beat on two quarters. 
Nice. Impressive. Thank you. I did that. I did that once. Um, me and a buddy, we, we played uh, $1, two quarters each. We beat the, um, do you remember the old Jurassic Park game where you sat in the in the Jeep. booth and you were in like, the Jeep? Yes. We, we played that game so often, we could walk in, sit down, put in 50 cents each, play a solid, like, that entire game, I think in its run, is at least a half hour, maybe more. Um, and we blow through that game on 50 cents each because we just, that was, that and that X-Men arcade game were the to only two games worth playing in most arcades, other oh. than if you could find an Adam's Family pinball machine. Does anyone remember the Aerosmith shooter game? It was an yeah. arcade. Yeah, that was that was where a you game my brother beat through CDs at the yeah. corrupt government. Yes. <laughs> See, now it that we be, brought the X Men game, was I want my intro to be welcome my to brother die. die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. You got Desert Strike, Return to the Golf. Awesome. Uh, Evo, Search for Eden. Which is a fun okay. game. Oh my god, that is that is really funny, but oh my, it's such a weird it really game. Is. Uh, Echo the Dolphin. You're like evolving into yeah, like different, different you know, like things. Yeah. yeah, Echo the Dolphin. Echo is <laughs> awesome. Uh, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Nice. Ooh, I love that. Uh, Final Fantasy It was like five. the... Uh, oh yeah, oh, 5, yeah. Well, 5 did... Well, 5 didn't come out to the US until like way later, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it was like, like wasn't it labeled as Final Fantasy three here in the states? Mm-hmm. Y- yes. Wasn't wasn't six three, and then because because four four was two, and then I thought they I'm always mixing them up. So, so then it's, it's, we we cut a bunch of them out because they became their own fucking franchise. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> flashback. Oh, Flash was awesome. That was the uh, the rotoscope game, like yes. uh, um, like uh, 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 the other one. Y- yeah, the uh, other one that had two names. Alone in the dark. No, not alone in the dark. Oh, um, oh, uh, another world. Another, another world. world. Yes. Yeah, which was uh, out of this. Another world. world. God, that's such a great game. It really is, and I man, did I I actually like was was. Really good. I mean, at, at the the Super NES, you know, alone in, or uh, um, out of this world was it was called in the U.S. But uh, and it was a little bit different. But um, it was uh, I I play that game just to death. It was such the a good rem- game. The, the remastering is um, absolutely beautiful too because they didn't fuck with it. It's yeah. just it's just they just smoothed everything so it looks and plays more smooth because there isn't all the fucking tearing and clipping from the fact that it's all, you know, jagged. Yeah, they didn't have the technical resolution. limitations. Yeah, yeah it looks so great. It just looks beautiful, because they didn't try to remaster it. They just cleaned up what already existed. Right, yeah, it's you. still hard as balls. Well, of course it is. Uh, I mean, it wouldn't be that died. game it wasn't fucking brutal. Yeah. Then we get James Bond Jr. The game. <laughs> uh, Kid, <laughs> Kid Chameleon. Oh god, I remember Speaking that one. Speaking of another fucking franchise that yeah. never needed to fucking exist. Um, a game that I know way, way too well. King's Quest f- uh, Five: Hair Today, Gone Tomorrow. Nice. Um, Kirby's Dream Land. Okay, I have a great story that's actually tied to this. I was in um, elementary school, all right, and Game Boys were the big thing. And so this kid, who turned out to be a real jackass, um. <laughs> Yeah, no, because all kids are jackasses at that age. <laughs> um, like, he was telling me, like, oh, yeah, this is a fun game. I don't play it anymore because it's so easy. And he, he's like, you want it? I'm like, yeah, sure. So he gives me Kirby's Dreamland, And I'm playing this game, and I'm just loving everything about it. I'm just like, why would someone get rid of this? I love the Kirby series, which is why I'm currently playing another Kirby game, despite the fact that they they're still majority the same game that they were, oh, yeah. but I think why I like them so much. But I remember Kirby's Dreamland 2. I got that game to 
as close to 100% as possible, unlocking all of the hidden areas to get all of the... Because every state has its own fucking gimmick, where, like, there's one hidden random object oh, that you yeah. can find. And I got every additional except for one. And as a kid, I spent forever going through every stage trying to find the one thing that I had not collected. And I eventually couldn't find it. And I will tell you that... While the Game Boy was very well designed, it was not able to take me throwing the game on the ground with it on because it erased my entire cop. Oh, oh no! I refused to start that game again. Oh. So to this day, I have never won a hundred percent Kirby's Dream Land Two. I still own the game. But I just cannot bring myself to now put a new battery in the cartridge oh. and pick that game up and try to play the entire thing through. Because I was like 99.9% through the game in a perfect run, complete, and oh. I just couldn't find it. And I, as a kid, threw it on. The game flew out, the Game Boy oh. turned off, and it erased the... It must have clipped the... Like the the battery connection to it that kept the internal memory storage running, so it must have ju- pulled the prong off the battery for just long enough to erase that internal memory save file. And I've oh, never that is, uh, I feel that though. Like, that is something that hits you hard. Uh, yeah, it's, okay. mm-hmm. it's on my list of things. If I find a way to stream, I would probably set up a stream of Kirby's Dreamland too. Yeah. If they ever bring it to like um. To like a virtual console switch, then I would probably buy it and play it. All right. uh, we got Lethal Enforcers in the arcade. Oh, sweet! Yep, Mario Paint. Oh, nice. Mario Paint! So, I, many, so many like memories playing that game. Bro. Did, did that hours. start a very young Deej on the road to which he now walks? Exactly. Yeah. Pretty much. It was well. Actually, it was that. And funny enough, it was actually Rock Zone, which started make me draw comics. Awesome. Wow. Uh, Mario is missing. <laughs> I, I That game is so underappreciated. I mean, it's one of two games where you play as Luigi, the main character. Yep. Yeah, but it was uh, a fucking... Why did they have to make it an educational game? It doesn't matter that it was an educational game, because I didn't learn any education <laughs> from it. But I did learn that you could summon Yoshi, and Yoshi would eat the fucking weird cactus centipede things Thing. that prevent you from moving level to level. Uh, so then it you had got, Yoshi and Yoshi. You got Mega Man great. Five. Yes. Uh, re- Mega- eh, I didn't think that was a good Mega Man game, to be totally honest. It was fine. It was acceptable. Uh, Metroid- it was better than Seven. Uh, Metroid Two: Return of Samus. Yes. Oh, that was on the Game Boy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. that one was really good. <laughs> then the game that changed everything: Mortal Kombat. Woo! Mm. Oh, it changed things, all right. Mortal Kombat. Well, yeah, fair, it was Mortal Kombat and uh, Night Trap, which is next. Yes. Yeah. Night God, Trap- they need to make another Mortal Kombat movie. I would. Out of all of the game movies that exist, I really want a reboot of a Mortal Kombat movie. I Actually, think that there's well, so much. To this they day, I still make- love and watch the Mortal Kombat movie. Oh, Hold on, yeah. then. Indeed. Mortal awesome. Kombat 1 and 2 were absolutely great movies, despite the fact that the continuity's fucked between them. Okay, Deej, then you're yes. going like this. For Mortal Kombat 11... Yeah. I'm pretty sure about this from what I've seen. Um, they're bringing back Shang Tsung. But, do you know who's voicing him? Oh my god, please, it's not who you think it is. It's who you think it is. Ooh! Yeah, it's he is going... Yeah, it's the original live-action uh, actor who played Shang Tsung is voicing him in the game. Carrie, Carrie, I'm sorry, hit, I'm just getting uh, so excited. I forget his... That's awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to double-check my sources, but I believe that is actually happening no, because you, you I believe... Right. It... You are right. Oh, sweet! Yeah. Oh, that's amazing! I feel like I just made two people's night. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow, Ronda yep. Ronda Rousey is Sonya Blade. Yep. Uh, yeah, Kari Her- Her- Hiroyuki Tagawa is Shang Tsung. The the world is good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. After Mortal Kombat, we get Night Trap. Uh, love, love, love Night Trap. I love Night Trap. My buddy owns two copies of it. One and one of it's still sealed up. 
Sweet. I, I have my like copy, ideas? and I bought the I bought the the HD remaster uh, a couple years ago. <laughs> I'm sorry, just hearing that. I bought the HD remaster Night Trap. I know it's so well. The thing, I mean, they they shot it on film. So if you watch the old one, you know it was it was pixelated because they at the time they didn't have the technology to be able to reproduce that. But now they do. So they went back to the original film negatives and were able to you know release uh, uh, you know a, a pristine copy. So I mean, it looks. You know, like you're watching a movie, which is what Does they it, wanted to do back in the day, but they they couldn't. So. Is it better with its remastering? Uh, yeah, because you can uh, you can see things a lot easier. Because I mean, also you know you're running it on depending on your setup. You know, you could be running it on a uh, a bigger screen, okay. so you're able to kind of to to see. Uh, you know, when the augers are uh, in the d- different rooms and you can set off the traps. It's still, like, hard because you, you really do have to, like, know where they're going to be in order to go and set off the traps. Because if you miss one, like, you have to get all of them to get the best ending. You can beat it and still get a good ending if you get, like, most of them. But uh, in order to get, you know, the best ending, you need to. Or or the worst ending because you can betray um, the... Uh, you can betray what's-her-name... Uh, from from different strokes, uh, <laughs> at the end, if you want to, you can set her in a trap and kill her. Um, but uh, it's it's great, man. I'm I, I was money well spent, man. I loved the hell oh. out of it. Yep. Nice. We also got uh, NCAA basketball game, which I still own. Uh, Pocky and Rocky. Wait, is that Boom Shakalaka? No, that that would be NBA Jam. Oh, okay. Uh, Pocky and Rocky. Uh, Roadrunners Death Valley Rally. Mm. Uh, Nightshade. <laughs> Wait a minute, is that um the game? Like they were playing on making a full hero series about it, but they failed, and it was a point click adventure. Pretty much, yes. Awesome. It was the it was the Egyptian like Sphinx yes. or not the Sphinx, the Egyptian Anubis. Uh, Anubis. Anubis, thank yeah. you. It was yeah, yeah, and it was going to be yeah, it like had great great potential art for it. Yeah, and yeah, it had great potential, and yeah, it just didn't. Uh, it it just did not pan out very well. Yep. Um, it, sorry. Med. Um, yeah, no, the only reason why I remember what Nightshade is is because of John Tron, so damn you, <laughs> <laughs> Uh Shining Force. Ooh. Oh, that was really, yeah, that was another Genesis uh, RPG. Yes. That was really good. Uh, the first Shin Megami Tenth game. Ooh. Uh, wow. Yeah. What was that on? Uh, Super Nintendo. It was, um, and you could actually get an import. Wow. Yeah. I didn't think it went all the way back that far. Nice. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Sweet. Soul Blazer. Ooh. Oh, I love Soul Blazer. Fun beat that was part two of the, uh, of the, um, the, uh, Enix trilogy. It was, uh, Act Razor, Soul Blazer, and then, uh, Terranigma. Yes. Uh, Spider Man Return of the Sinister Six. Ooh. Uh, that was the one that came after the Venom one, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah. That was uh, after Maximum Carnage. Carnage yep. Yeah. Uh, Simpsons, Krusty's Funhouse. It was not fun. No, it Ooh, was not. No, it, no, it was not. not. Yet, because you were basically Krusty and you had to, like, trap mice. Yeah, it was, uh, it was like a weird puzzle game thing. The yeah. Simpsons had a lot of weird games. Yeah. yeah, I feel like when they got the be- like got on like PS2, even like the uh, Simpsons, the game that came out for like 360 and everything. I feel like those are like, and I'm also adding it Road Rage. I feel like those were the only like good Simpsons games when they made them more in 3D. What about the Simpsons uh, Hit and Run? Yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, and the the beat 'em up was really good. Yeah, the arcade beat 'em up was yes. good. Oh, oh, arcade absolutely. was good. The, the but handheld was versions were never great. Yeah. No. I mean, yeah, cuz I I, I was so them. excited for Bart versus the Space Mutants. And ooh, boy. That game was, <laughs> was that, atrocious. That game was so hard. Um then you get Simpsons Bart's and Mare, which had cool mini games. Mhm. Yeah. Okay. I appreciated that they were trying to reference multiple different movies, but some of those some of those levels were just cheap as fuck. I'm calling it now. Mm-hmm. All right, then then you get Streets of Rage two. 
Nice. Uh, Not as good as the original, no. but still good. No, uh, but as long as you got to play as Haggard. Uh, I think I remember their person. Well, Hag- person. that was uh, Haggard was um, was uh, Final. Oh, okay. Wow, I keep mixing that. Stuff. That was the yeah. I mean, it's uh, yeah, it's yeah. The, the uh, Streets of Rage was uh, Axel Blaze, and uh, then there were um, Poison. God. No, no, Poison was was that was also um, Final Fight. Uh, okay. Final Fight, yeah. Okay, then my apologies. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. It's no big. No, it's an honest mistake, man. There were so many beat 'em ups back then, but they were the two big ones. Was okay. Final Fight with Super NES, and then uh, Streets of Rage was uh, Sega's answer. Oh, okay. Uh, Street Fighter Two Championship Edition. Nice. Uh, Super Mario Kart. And oh. then it would begin a saga unlike any other. Yeah. Uh, God, I played so much Mario, uh, an obscene, um, and more so Mario Kart 64, though. Oh, yeah. But the original Rainbow Road is hell on earth. <laughs> yes. Like, I saw that remastered in Mario Kart 8, and it is hell on earth. <laughs> <sighs> uh, Super Mario Land 2, six golden coins, which introduced us to Wario. Awesome. Wow! Oh, no, that was Waluigi. Waluigi. No, no, he was, wow! Yes. Wahaha! Um, I'm a Wario. Yeah. I'm a gonna win. I'm a gonna win. Um, then we get the second Star Wars game that I ever played, other than KOTOR 2, was Super Star Wars for the Super Nintendo. Ooh. Ooh. That was a really good one. That was the one that was like you could beat it, but an Empire and Jedi were impossible. <laughs> yeah, they were. Because... Uh, that land speed, uh, no, the land speeder was, uh, ro- rogue, right? Land the la- speeder? That, well, the land speeder was in, in Super Star Wars. Right, yeah, that's right. And they, that, that mission just always, like, ruined me. <laughs> oh, but the, the land speeder, uh, Star Wars arcade game is probably the best Star Wars video game that's ever been created. You actually are staring at a gigantic screen, sitting on a land speeder, whipping mm-hmm. through trees as you blow other fucking stormtroopers on other speeders of the forest moon of Endor. Nice. God, I fucking love that arcade game. Uh, the Lost Vikings. Oh, that was uh, Blizzard, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Were well, there a few good ones on the console? And I say few mm-hmm. because I don't think they had a lot. Well, they had that and uh, Blackthorn. I- Yes, that was great. Blackthorn was so, so amazing. Because yeah. he could shoot a shotgun backwards one-handed. Yes. <laughs> it was so cool looking. Just boom, boom, boom. Yeah, that was great. Um, Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse. Okay. Uh, Tasmania. Mm. Did you get to play as the devil? Yes, you do. <laughs> there you go. Um, TMNT Hyperstone Quest. For the uh, Genesis, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Top Gear, um, Ultima Seven, The Black Gate, and Ultima Underworld: uh, Stygian of the Abyss. Mm. Which the only reason that sounds... I, the only reason I know that was because of Spoony. Uh, <laughs> that that I, sounds like a, such I a miss... great name though, Stygian of the Abyss. Oh yeah, I, Ultima I, I miss great games. Spoony. I know he'll never come back, but I miss the older Spoonie. We all do. Oh, he's he's gone forever, unfortunately. Uh, virtual Racing. World Heroes. Virch. Wolfenstein 3D. Ah, oh, yes, killing Hitler in 3D. <laughs> Mecha Hitler. Yes, well, killing, kill, yeah, I was going to say Mecha, Mecha Robot Hitler. Right, like, Do, what right, does it like, matter? It's still a version of Hitler. <laughs> yes, it's it's his head in a jar on top of a mech. Yes. <laughs> um, WWE Super WrestleMania. Did you play that, Rick? Yes, I do. I still own it. Oh, awesome! Um, WWF WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge for the Genesis. Uh, World of Illusion. Um, X Men the Arcade Game. Welcome to die. Welcome to die. Sweet. I wish that was my opening. <laughs> and I would only play as Davler. 
Yeah, she was she was like the one very, super good character in that. Well, her and um, Colossus. Wolverine. Yeah, her and Colossus. I was pretty good with Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler was good, but it took me getting used to him though. Yeah. I'd... Um. Then we get Zool Ninja in the nth dimension. Hmm. Okay. And then finally, <laughs> Cookie. <laughs> oh my god I have a friend of mine seriously that is her favorite game of all time <laughs> okay I have to ask what was that about was that just about a game where you gave Yoshi a cookie no it was uh, basically no, it Tetris was a... yeah, oh, it's okay. a yeah it's Tetris it's just a simple puzzle game it sounds amazing yeah. yes with with you know with Mario correct yeah so and Yoshi making Yoshi noises so but she got it when she was like super little and she's just like it's always been like my my favorite game i'm like oh, hey that's cool you know she's like i recognize it's not a good game i'm like i didn't say it was or wasn't i'm like believe me i like there's some garbage that i like because i played it you know when i was little <laughs> oh yeah and that concludes 1992 Oof. wow a lot of good stuff 92 yeah. 